Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm back and uh, I've decided to show you one of the games from the tournament that is currently happening, the Altibox Norway Championship. I thought about uh, skipping the entire event, uh, but this is one game that you simply don't skip. And uh, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you've all seen it. Uh, but uh, just in case some of you haven't, uh, let's check it out. So it's Young Shishtov Duda versus Magnus Carlsen from round five uh, of the Altibox Norway Championship. And it's, uh, well, it's quite the game. Uh, I know that you guys are, have, have, are having a lot of questions about how everything went, how the surgery went. It went great as uh, I, I am here and, you know, I have, a, I have an improved, uh, well, yeah, we could say an, an improved heart valve and, uh, and uh, an improved uh, aorta. Uh, and should be working much much better. I should be I should not be getting as tired as much I should be able to, to do much more, uh, but we'll see how it goes so far I'm more than pleased with the results and if uh, you know uh, on, on the upper side if I say some nonsense uh, I can always blame it on the anesthesia uh, And uh, this is one of the games that I, that I knew I'm going to cover so I've been home for some uh, four days now uh, that, that I've returned from the hospital and I feel I feel confident enough to try and make a video. I still don't know if I'm actually going to upload it, but I'm, I'm just going to try and make it. So without further ado, let's check it out. Round 5 of the Altibox Norway Championship. Young Shishtov Duda versus Magnus Carlsen. Uh, let's see what happens here. So Duda with the white pieces opens with E4. Uh, we have C6 by Magnus going for the Karo Khan defense. Uh, we have D4 and D5. Sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to c3, so just a normal standard Karo Khan, uh, the captures on e4, knight captures, and now knight to f6. We have captures on f6, uh, this is all perfectly standard, e captures, and now c3, strengthening the center. We have bishop to d6, and now bishop to d3. We have castles by Magnus, and queen to c2 now, so inviting rook to e8 check, but it's not a problem. Uh, there is a, a lot of theory regarding this. So rook e8 check. And now there are only a handful of games with the bishop to e3, even though it's not a mistake or anything, it's like the second, uh, the engine's second move. Uh, but since this is a, a, a variation from the age of the engines, uh, everyone plays the, the, the first move recommended by the engine. So knight to e2. Uh, and h5 by Magnus. Uh, we have bishop to e3, continuing development, and knight to d7. And do the castle's queen side. And there are a lot of moves that uh, are possible here. Knight to f8 is the, the most popular one, uh, uh, releasing that grip, grip of the bishop on f5. Uh, but here we have b5 instead. Magnus starts pushing right away, and this is where things get really interesting. So here Duda continues with d5. He puts pressure on the position uh, because he's either going to capture on c6, or if Magnus captures or advances, he's going to capture on b5, and black's uh, pawn structure will, be, uh, will become very vulnerable. So here Magnus uh, continues with what he had in mind. He, he, he decided to go for his pawn sacrifice, he played c5 and he gives up the b5 pawn. And okay, Duda says I will, I will have that pawn. Uh, we have bishop captures on b5 and now rook to b8, attacking the bishop here. Uh, c4, nicely defending, and now a6, opening up the b file for Carlsen's rook. And here, bishop to a4. And this is where the things get, uh, well, different. There is one game in the database where rook to e5 was played uh, in in the Porto Caras Open. Uh, Velimir Ivic played it against Tobjorn Hansen. Uh, and uh, it was it was quite the game. Uh, but here, instead of uh, rook to e5, we have rook to e7. And here, uh, it is as of move 15 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Duda deals with this. He says, uh, okay, that's a bit different now. I'm going to play knight to g3, which attacks your pawn here, but also uh, threatens uh, not that. Uh, knight to f5, which will go after the rook and the bishop here. So Magnus says, okay, I'm going to go knight, f knight e5. Now the bishop guards this square. Uh, so knight to e4. Capturing here doesn't really do all that much uh, because bishop g4 just uh, gets the job done for black. So instead knight to e4, uh, an excellent uh, square for the knight. You will be able to capture the bishop uh, as soon as you want. Uh, and if the bishop moves, you will be able to push your pass pawn. So here rook e to b7. This was Carlsen's plan all along. He shifts both of his rooks to the open b file. Medo. Uh, Medo is uh, 
sniffing around uh, some 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 areas that he shouldn't be sniffing around at. Uh, but okay, uh, rook e to b7 and now b3. Defending the b2 pawn, of course, we have b3 and now rook to b4. And this is where things get really interesting. You can see already that there are some tactics here. Like, for example, rook captures here, a pawn captures, then the other rook takes uh, this rook's place and then rook captures on c4 might be an idea uh, because the knight also covers c4, the queen and king are here. So could be uh, a lot of nasty stuff happening. Happening. And uh, Duda has to decide what to, how to go about this. Does he go for bishop captures on d6, uh, or does he go the other way around, which is bishop to d2, and uh, try and force this variation, which is what he does. He goes bishop to d2, uh, and Magnus decides to go for uh, rook captures on a4. So b, uh, b captures on a4, and now bishop to f5. And this is a very, very interesting position. Uh, this bishop completely controlling this diagonal, which is beautiful. The rook controlling the b file. Uh, Duda's king stuck on c1. Uh, it's uh, it, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Magnus sacrificed material, but he does have the bishop here. He does have the attack. So let's see what happens. So uh, Duda goes rook d to e1. A very important move, as you also need a... Uh, uh, safety square for your king. You don't want to constantly be worried about uh, what if the, the queen moves and then I, I get checkmated. Uh, and here we have h4 by Magnus. Knight to g4 was also an idea, but knight to g4 is basically if you want to uh, trade back the material you've sacrificed. For example, now, now you're threatening this, uh, captures followed by knight captures on f2, for example, f3. Uh, you could go captures to rook captures and still knight f2 will win you back uh, your rook. So the, if you want, you could go for this. Uh, but Magnus uh, goes for something else. He goes for h4 first. Uh, we have h3 by Duda, not allowing to create further weaknesses, because if you allow h3, then this is weak, then this is coming, and it's, uh, it's just terrible. Uh, but as you can see here, it's it's uh, it's a difficult position to play for for White. Uh, if you put this position to an engine, uh, the uh, the engine will tell you that White White is better. But I imagine playing this. I mean, you can't move anything. You can't move the queen. You can't move the knight. Uh, you constantly have to worry about the the, the queen entering uh, into the position. If the queen moves somewhere, it's a it's a pretty crazy position. So here, like I said, h3 and now knight to g6 by Magnus. Now. Uh, uh, now the knight can come uh, even deeper into the game. So here, rook to e3. It's a very important move as it brings the rook into the game and it allows the bringing of the other rook into the game as well. Plus you have some additional protection along the third rank. Knight to f4 by Magnus and now comes g4. Uh, so attacking the bishop here, Magnus just moves it. He's not interested in capturing Aupassant. Uh, and now comes king to d1. Uh, by Duda, uh, getting the king to, to a slightly safer square, so you don't have to constantly be uh, worried about any any knight jumps in the future. Uh, but here, uh, Magnus uh, played f5. Queen to d7 is a, a sort of a prelude to f5, and it, it was the way to go. But he played f5 a bit too, bit too soon, and here Duda had a free move. So here, Duda played knight captures on d7. We have queen captures on d7, and now g captures on f5. So he closes this diagonal, uh, well, I'm not going to say uh, forever, but uh, for a very long time. Bishop h5 check and now f3 as the rook covers the f3 square. Uh, and here Magnus goes in with queen to f6. And here you have some very, very interesting options. The queen can go to a1, uh, the, the rook is still very strong, the knight is still very strong, the bishop is still very active. So it's still very interesting, but uh, comparing it to this position before f5 was played, uh, Duda had a lot less resources um, uh, at his disposal. So queen to f6, Magnus throws the queen into the game, and now, of course, uh, you don't want to allow any, any back ch checks, so bishop to c3. Now ideas like rook g1 are coming, uh, so of course you have to prevent that, but a queen to g5, uh, defending g1, also threatening some discoveries as the rook on e3 is undefended, so instantly uh, queen to e4. Rook h to e1 also gets... Uh, uh, gets the rook into the game while defending this rook, but Duda prefers queen to e4. Uh, and here, queen to g2. Now Magnus offers the knight for the rook here. Rook h to e1, and now uh, now f6 is the way to to properly defend with black. Although it's uh, very very hard to decide how how to how to even do such a thing in such a position. Uh, for example, f6, you have to realize that if the knight is captured, uh, yes, you are attacking this guy here, but also rook to b1 is just checkmate, so that's that's the thing. Uh, so that's why uh, f6 is a strong defensive resource here. But Magnus played queen captures on a2, which seems like w it wins the game on the spot, 
uh, because I mean, how do you prevent a uh, rook to b1? There's just no move that prevents that, uh, or or is there? Uh, well, uh, feel free to pause the video and try to figure out if, if there is such a move indeed in this position uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the only winning move for white uh, in the position. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it's queen to c2. And it's just incredible that such a move, uh, you know, uh, shows up out of nowhere. Uh, because now your original idea doesn't really work. Rook b1 check, you just move the king, king to d2. And now, I mean, your queen is hanging. Where do you move the queen? Because the rook will be hanging as well. So you might as well trade everything. And after all is said and done, captures, captures, is, you're just up a piece. You have more pawns. You're, you're completely winning. Uh, another thing you could do after this queen to c2 idea is just go queen captures on c2 right away. But, I mean, you... you uh, you've already sacrificed material. You can't. Uh, you can't continue like this. So queen captures on c4 is what Magnus played, uh, but this comes uh, with the sacrifice of more material. So rook to e8 check by Duda. Now king to h7, not even allowing this trade to happen. Uh, now uh, asking, do you want to capture on b8? Duda says, yeah, I'm not. I'm not afraid. Rook captures on b8 was played. Uh, and now uh, bishop captures on f3, very interesting for Magnus, but it doesn't do anything because after king c1, knight e3 check, you can just play king b1. Now it's Duda's rook that controls the entire b file. You don't really, you, you don't have a continuation here. So after this rook captures on b8 move, we have queen captures on d5, again with check for Magnus, queen to d2, blocking now with an attack on the knight, and now bishop captures on f3 with check. King to c1, and now queen captures on f5. So Magnus grabs that pawn as well, and now rook to e3. So Magnus is still kind of attacking, but uh, Duda has two rooks. And if, if, if Magnus doesn't figure out something out, uh, like instantly, it's, uh, it, it's going to be over for him. So knight to e2 with check, uh, hoping, that, uh, hoping that Duda, of course, captures this. So you have some queen f4 check action at the end, picking up the rook there. However, after knight e2 check, just king b2 by Duda, and now knight captures on c3 by Magnus. We have queen captures on c3, attacking the bishop, and now queen to f4, offering the bishop for the rook there. Uh, queen to d3 check by Duda, and now f5. Still, the rook is under attack, so rook to f8, now threatening to pick up the f pawn. Uh, and queen to b4 with check. We have king to c1 and now bishop to e4. So uh, Magnus uh, is able to create this, uh, this uh, well, barricade here. As now the bishop and pawn uh, will, be, will be guarding the black king somewhat for, from the two rooks. But for how long? Uh, queen to b3, again offering a trade of queens. Magnus, of course, has no option. He has to decline. And the queen to c3, again offering a queen trade, queen back to d6, and now rook to f7. Here, Duda is, th is a threatening checkmate, and there is not all that much uh, Magnus can do here. Queen g6, defending, uh, and rook to d7 now. Uh, we have uh, queen to g1, Magnus has to try something, king to b2, and now uh, c4. Again, Magnus tries some trickery here, uh, because, uh, well, if you, go, if you go for the capture here, then you just hang a rook here. So instead, after c4, we have rook captures on e4. Duda says, okay, I'm up so much material, I really don't care anymore, I just want to get this done. So f captures on e4, and now rook to d4. Duda is up a whole rook, and... Uh, well, if this was any other normal game, uh, 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 rather than the one that uh, uh, had uh, Carlsen's uh, 150 games uh, winning streak on the line, I'm sure Magnus would have resigned uh, long ago. But, of course, uh, he continues. Queen f2 check. We have queen to d2 defending and now c3 with check. Uh, captures and now queen to g3 with check. At least uh, you cannot capture here, so Magnus will create another pass pawn. King to b2, and now queen captures on h3. Duda also grabs the e4 pawn. We have queen to g3, and now queen to d4. Uh, we have queen to g2 check. Magnus still hoping to promote his pass pawn. King to c3, and now queen to f3. Again, with check. We have king to b4, and now queen to f8 with check. King to a5, and now queen to f5 with check. King captures on a6 and now g5. No, no longer is there any, any time for uh, for waiting around. Uh, Magnus just opens up the position and he will start pushing his pawns. Uh, but uh, I mean, the reality is he is down a rook. 
So a5, uh, but h3, also Magnus starts pushing. Rook to e7 check, king to g6, and now queen to g7 with check by Duda. King h5, and now queen to h7 check, connecting nicely here. Uh, Magnus still goes king to g4, so hoping for a queen trade. Maybe he can start pushing his two connected pass pawns. It's not, not much, but something to go on. Uh, however, uh, feel free to pause the video and end this game and with it Carlsen's uh, 150 games uh, unbeaten streak uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, of course, the move is Rook to E4 check. Congratulations to everyone. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, that's the move. Uh, and here uh, it was in this position, of course, that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game because you can either capture the Rook, uh, which means you, you're going to be down a whole Queen, uh, or you're going to move your own King from the defense of the Queen and then just captures and that's just it. So yeah, uh, what a what a way to go! It was a, it was a brilliant run. Uh, it was uh, it, for those of you who don't remember, uh, last time Magnus lost the game was two years, two months, and ten days ago uh, to Shakhryar Mamedyarov uh, in the Bill Chess Festival, and now he loses uh, to Young Shitov Duda in round five of the Altibox Norway Championship. So pretty crazy stuff. Uh, just uh, one of the games I wanted to show you. I didn't know if I was going to make any videos from this tournament or how I was going to feel after uh, the operation and everything. Uh, but uh, I, I, I must say I feel incredibly, incredibly well. I didn't think I'd be feeling that great and that uh, my uh, recovery would be going so well. But, uh, you know, seems like uh, seems like uh, care in Croatia is like uh, top notch or something because, you know, they, they really did a, a fine job. Uh, and yeah, uh, if any of you guys have any questions regarding this, uh, I didn't want to talk too much about the, the operation. But if you guys are interested in that, just drop a comment. I'm going to I'm going to answer that. Uh, and I don't know if I will be covering any more games uh, from the uh, from the uh, Altibox Norway Championship. I probably will, since uh, I've tried. This is this is actually the first time I'm uh, even trying to record a video since I got back, and uh, I, there don't seem to be any any issues. Oh, s s seems to be showing a bit of uh, seem to be show seem to be showing a bit of scar there. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't. I don't seem to be having any issues. And like I said, if I said any nonsense, it has nothing to do with my knowledge of chess. Uh, it has to do with anesthesia. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the game. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm, I'm sure Magnus didn't, but you know, at the end of one streak is only the beginning of a new one. So we we have that to look forward to and see where it takes us. Maybe to to a 200 game streak. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Gis de Corte, uh, Gareth Chandler, uh, Savas Mekliades. Uh, Rud van Stralen and Vasilio Stolias for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, maybe continuing the coverage of this uh, tournament. We'll see how it goes. Checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. And do tell me uh, what were the news uh, like in Poland uh, the next day after Car uh, Duda defeated Carlsen. Uh, see you soon, guys.